Candlepin New Generation encourages kids to be active and enjoy Candlepin Bowling. Candlepin New Generation is made possible by Academy Lanes, New England's largest Candlepin Center. Visit academylanes.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. Group here on Candlepin New Generation. He is the Jack Edwards of Children's Bowling, Brian Rowe. I'm Rob Taylor, and we have got a three versus two showdown featuring a defending champion. I'm pumped. Oh yeah, one of uh, one of my favorite age groups. I love watching uh, the future of Candlepin Bowling up here, if you will. Cute kids, big hearts. Can't lose. Interview children, Brian. All right, I'm over here with Thank you. Dylan and Ella. Dylan, defending champ. Yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. is great. That's, the crowd can hear us this year. Behind you. This is awesome. What do you got to do to uh, repeat as champion and be our first ever repeat champion That's in Canada Pinion Generation? Not true. Kerrigan did um, it literally last year. Same thing I kind of did last year work hard, do what I did. How have you been bowling lately? Um, I've been doing okay. Nothing extraordinary, but I'm trying to fix that right now. What are you kind of doing to fix that? Um, just walking straight, taking in my brother Austin's advice. Nice, very good. And we'll talk to your partner, Ella. Ella, it's your first time bowling on the show. How are you feeling? Pretty confident. Wow, that's good. No nerves, nothing? Well, a little nervous. Don't be nervous. Uh, what's it mean having someone who's bowled here before and won here before as your partner? Does it help? Prop yeah. Because he's been here before, right? Yeah. All right. I'd prefer to tricks. I'd prefer to bowl with the champion than not bowl. With I would I would rather right. bowl with the champion as well too. Ella won a tiebreaker match in her qualifier. You should ask her about it. You won a tiebreaker match? Wow. Would you uh, do you remember what you hit? You it's not important, hit? Brian. She won. It was a round of 90, and it was really high stakes. There you go. Congratulations. And speaking of high stakes, we've got Dom Ritchie here. Dom, you just said that this is your fifth season on the show. We're counting. How old are you, Dom? Nine. Cool. It's my fourth though. Fourth time. Huh? Fourth on the show? Yeah. I Got it. I my fifth. Uh, what's it going to do? So you've been with us nearly half of your life. Uh, what type of experience do you think that brings to the table? Just knocking down a lot of pins. Bowl any, bowl any big games lately? No, not really. <laughs> well, maybe today's the day for it. You've got Kayla next to you. This is your third, third season on the show? So what does that mean? How, what are you going to try to bring to the table? Uh, maybe 100. I would like to see 100. Have you bowled any recently? Yeah. Any predictions for this match, Dom? I know you're the you're the pre-hype king. Anything? What do you? What's People's your take? Champ. Assess the opponents here. Dylan, Academy, Foe. Take me through it. I'm just gonna try to knock down as many pins as I can. If I don't win, fine. If I do, great. I don't care what I do. These well kids said. Are, these kids are too PC, too political correct. Okay. Yeah, we'll push them towards edginess, Brian. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of edgy, let's go to the booth and see who's there. In the booth. I know, they just dragged me out of the audience and I come over here to say hi. How are we doing, everybody? Let's have a good time. Ella is on lane four. She may throw her first ball. Good luck, Ella. So Next my, first, uh, my first question to you is, uh, who are you rooting for? Uh, it's down the middle right here. Yeah. Um, there's a couple kids over there I know, a couple I don't know. I'm just kidding. Nah, I really <laughs> want my son to do well today. <laughs> Some good unbiased commentary coming at you from Trying the to do my best. of one of the contestants. That's right. should be great. We've got no, but all these kids have worked hard to get here and Nobody's going to lay down for anybody, so let's just see what happens. Here, here. We got Ella Tucker on lane four. She's in the black. Caitlin Touchette in the red. Ella is the only newcomer in this matchup. The rest of these kids are some seasoned Candlepin New Generation veterans. It's really good to see some newcomers coming up, coming to the roll-offs, making the cut. Band, yeah. What a ball. Nice little 10 by Kate. Ella with the eight. We haven't had Kate Van Lynn's kids in a long time. I think they got some new ownership down there, and they've been sending some kids to the program, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's great that they have an established junior league up there, and a whole bunch of new kids are coming out. That's what the whole, we, we need. We need new kids getting exposed, getting in the junior leagues, coming to things like this, showing that there's something to do. You know, even if you're not going to be an athlete in any other sport, you can still do this at a high level. And I was going to say, speaking of ownerships, you're the owner of Riverwalk Lens. How's yes, everything sir. down there? Uh, doing well now, five years in. Uh, leagues are doing great. Uh, a lot of house tournaments, uh, a lot of shenanigans, you know, late night and stuff like that up there. But, uh, you know, it's great. I'm living a dream I've had since I was these kids' age. And 
persistence, hard work, it comes. I'm a it big, does come. Big fan of the, uh, I think the YouTube video had 100 pins on one lane. That was awesome. Right? We yeah, had a lot of fun good. doing that that day. We set up 100 pins in, the, in two lanes. It was like 50 and 50. Yeah. And uh, we broke a lot of stuff that day. We broke some lights. <laughs> we attempted a couple flying eagles that didn't make it on camera, but we had a good time. You, finally, good time. you finally get to do everything you've ever wanted in a bowl now. Like that other owners might have been like, no, you're not doing 100 pins. So it's like your own little playground. I remember I used to ask at the place where I grew up in Somerville, can we just mess around? Around the guy, no, you can't do that. Now they can't tell me no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I got keys to the place, man. <laughs> so if people tell you not to do things, buy a bowling alley. It's, it's my response. Basically, yes. If you want to go and raise shenanigans at a bowling alley, just go get one. <laughs> or go to Riverwalk. Or come to Riverwalk, <laughs> and I will let bet. you mess stuff up as long as you fix it. No free ads, <laughs> but go to Riverwalk. 17 to 16, an early lead for Ella over Kate. Ella qualified with a 243 score. Her opponent, Caitlin Touchette, a 249. So we got a close matchup here. Ella listed her high five as, I'm new to this, so I don't have one yet. Nice. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Well, proof she was thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of it. We gave them their, uh, we gave them the stat sheets the night before for the first time ever, and some of these kids really gave us some good thoughts here. Caitlin Touchette, another Maine native. Caitlin puts her nickname down as the Tiger. Cool. That's pretty good. Yeah, it is. Caitlin the Tiger Touche. That Ella's flows nice know. off the tongue. I like that. That flows good. Do you have a nickname, Mark? I feel like for someone with as high energy as you, I feel like I don't know any. any uh, of them. Ever since I was a kid, everybody just has been calling me Maki. You know, yeah, no Mark. R, just yeah. M-A-H. Uh, oh, yeah. Just growing up where I grew up, we haven't said an R since the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just don't say them. But uh, it helps in a bowling alley. There's a lot of marks in the professional game. Oh, yeah, that's that's your mark. So whenever somebody says mock, five guys turn around. If they say mocky, I'm the only one. So it works out. That does work out. Practical. Great bid by Ella. Caitlin, meanwhile, looking to clean this shot up. Caitlin may not be sure if she's supposed to go right now. This is a nice little stalling contest. Caitlin, I think you can go. Go she's get him, Caitlin. Taking a stand off. Caitlin. I see the tumbleweeds rolling around. This is good. This is good. This is psychological warfare. Yes, it is. Here. Nice out by Ella. Caitlin just misses. Yeah, maybe I just completely counted wrong, Brian. I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but we got a five pin lead for Ella. Caitlin bowls out of Stars and Strikes lanes. Lists her high single at 105. High three at 271. Nice. High five at 419. But she is keeping track. Yes, she is definitely keeping track. Kaylin comes from a, a good pedigree of strong main bowlers up there in the Pine Tree State. Gets a great break off the hit. She might have the better leave here. Where are you playing this pro bowler? I would hit it as hard as I could directly in the middle of the headpin. Split him? Yep. Ella. Oh, wait, were you talking about Ella? I was talking about that one, but oh, she doesn't I'm sorry. need your advice. That's <laughs> we don't, you, we don't need a lot on that I'm one. I'm paying a little attention to my son's team. Mark told me to tell Caitlin to hit the head pin. She doesn't do it, but Ella with a beautiful Well, she did hit the head pin the on the first ball, so sure. she was already ahead of the game on that True. one. True. 44 and a ball for Ella, 38 for Kate. Let's take another look at that Ella spare conversion. It is a pretty one. That was a beautiful two and one. Played the wood perfectly, kicked it right over into the 10 pin. And now we've got a six pin lead in favor of Dylan. He's throwing the first ball. And we've got Dominic Ritchie here on lane three, throwing the second. That's my boy. Tough split for Dom. What's Dom's headspace these days? Where was he at last night? Nervous for this, pumped, and Honestly, he was more relaxed than I've ever seen him like leading into a big important day, like a, a tournament or a TV taping or something like that. He was just sitting at home chilling on his DS, just playing. <laughs> I said, buddy, you know, you got a TV show. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> this gonna, is you know, it'll be all right. I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. Just one more taping for Dominic He Ritchie. was more concerned about bowling against his buddy. Him and Dylan are very good friends together here at Academy in the Kids League. They've been doubles partners the last few tournaments together. He was just telling me before we came in here today, he's like, I don't want to bowl against my buddy. I one said, of well, them's got to win. Sometimes you have to, man. Even in the pro game, we have to bowl against our best friends. And, before the match, we're great buddies. During the match, we're trying to win. And then afterwards, we all hang out together. It goes That's back to being buddies. Candlepin. That's right. Dom with a tough spare, but a nice placement. Plays the wood, right? Great bid. No luck. And he just waves at that darn six pin. I don't have time for you, six pin. Yeah, he watches us too much. 
Nice ten, buddy. That a boy. Good ten there, buddy. So four pins the lead in favor of Ella and Dylan. Dom shipping away though through two. What's Dom's size single mark off the top of your head? Dom recently threw a 130 Ooh. at Riverwater. He and I were having some fun having a game against each other. And he pitched a 130 at me. Thank God it was a string. I threw a 145. Out of boy. So <laughs> has <laughs> he beat you yet? Thank no, not yet. It's coming. Not yet. I'm almost 37. I'm gonna get whooped by my son before he's even 10. <laughs> but that's okay. That means he's doing that's what something he wanted, right. right? Yeah. That's right. Now, how, how easy did it come getting him in the ball? Was he right there, right from the beginning? He wanted yes. to be a part of it? Ever since the womb, basically, when Melissa was carrying him, we were bowling in leagues. And once he got, he was about, I think, four or five months old, and I put a little golf ball in his hand. Like, he was just this little ball of fluff as a little baby. Yep. <laughs> I had him sat down, I put a golf ball in his hand, and I sat up crayons, like, a few <laughs> inches in front of him, and I yeah, had him throwing the ball at the crayons. Yeah, this wasn't forced upon at all. Yeah, Dom never had a chance to get a <laughs> no, kid. He was, let's put it this way, he wasn't going to be a golfer. Like, it just wasn't going to happen. It's just been in his blood. He's loved it. And he actually loves 10 pin bowling, too. Oh, great shot by Dylan. Great try by Dylan. Just great sweet try. Slept. From the left. Yeah, we were talking about uh, the potential for a 10 pin, candle pin, duck pin combined tournament the other day. It would be so much fun. A bunch of us have sat around and joshed around about that, that it would be fun to do like three, three, and three. Yeah, exactly. Great 10, buddy. Great 10. That'd be wild. But see, the thing, you have to do the candle pin first. Because if you do the other games, your arm's so stretched out from the heavy right. ball, by the time you pick up a candle pin ball, it feel like a golf ball. Throw it through the ceiling. And then you're throwing it right through the ceiling. Yep. Yep. Have you been getting involved in the duck pin game at all? I have. Yeah. Actually, uh, there's some good friends of ours. The De Palma family runs a uh, duck pin house up in North Chelmsford. Okay. Little, like, six-lane house in the basement. It is the coolest little man cave bowling alley I have ever seen. Okay. Um, and they have these little handicap tournaments here and there. And uh, I've gone up there and completely embarrassed myself a few times. It's a good time, though. <laughs> but uh, I actually use duck pin. I go bowling duck pin to, uh, when I'm not rolling the ball so smoothly in candle pin. If I go through a little funk kind of thing, I roll some duck pin balls, and it helps to get everything laid off a little bit. Yeah. But I'm still a candle pin bowler for the, my whole life. I'll always love it. We're going to the ladies. Any last words, Mark, before we send you home? No, this is great. This is a real tight match right here. My buddy's doing well. Everybody's doing well here. The ladies are having a good time. I thank you guys so much for having me in here and a little bit of Thanks commentary. Thanks for joining us, Mark. It's a blast having you. Do good things over at Riverwalk. We love when the young guys are Thanks a lot, these guys. It's great. Robbie, Brian, thanks for everything, guys. Thanks, it's cool. Good to have you. Mark Ritchie, folks, leaves an 86 to 82 match at the half, plus Ella's fill. Dom has abandoned the score post. So, Mark, if you want to take a look at the scores, it might not hurt. Mark Ritchie, one of the great guys in the game of Candlepin. Ella with a nice bid for a second straight spare. Caitlin veers a little off. And so, after that mark, we have got a 97 to 89 match in favor of Ella and Dylan. That's an eight pin deficit that Caitlin Touchette's gonna try to punch into. What do we got here? Well, this is a great opportunity for us to go to our volunteer slash crew member of the week. Jeanette Southall is now in the house. She's been helping us track kids at stops, collect score sheets, excel wizardry, mothers Elisa Southall, yeah, yeah. and all of us. And so she big thanks to job. Jeanette for her support of the show. Yes, thank you, Jeanette. She also made copies for us today. She of, does it all. Uh, she really sheets. does it all. Yeah. I have one. What a shot by Ella. Bolt call going left on that spare conversion. She picks it up. And the one newcomer to new generation is pulling up a storm. 65 and a ball through seven as we take another look at that spare conversion by the Cape Ann contestant. Ella's proudest contest, proudest accomplishment is that as a 10-year-old, she gets to bowl on the women's league at Cape Ann's with owner Caitlin. Pretty cool. Favorite TV show is Fuller House. I show. Yeah. Fuller she has house. filled this house with some some fans. Yeah, I haven't Fuller seen House. Fuller house yet. I watched the first five minutes of the first episode and then uh, decided I was good. I don't think you have a very good attention span. Uh, better than most. You can't listen to Ed Sheeran either. I just it's not that my attention isn't good. It's that it's sophisticated. 
Tell me about Kaylin Touchet. Kaylin Touchet. I think we went over her highs already. We'll go over some of her favorites. Favorite food is steak. Can't hate on it. Favorite TV show, Austin and Allie? Not sure. I know Allie and AJ, the oh, early know. Disney artists. I don't know Allie. You don't know Allie and AJ. They were like early I don't think we're supposed to know their favorite shows. Favorite song, The Middle. Is that like Jimmy Eat World, you think? Why don't you just see me in the uh, middle? No. It's not Jimmy Eat World. I'm trying. Uh, favorite pro bowler, Kerrigan Skinner. Not a pro, but a wow. Caleb and New Gen two-time winner. First ever. Caitlin Touchette with a tough spare conversion opportunity. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but she's going to try to cut the three into the one. She's that's on it. it. Great try. Spare conversion opportunity? That's the teacher in me framing bad leaves as positives, I think. <laughs> that's not a split. That's an opportunity, kid. And so our youngest contestants trying to pin especially big at the younger age groups when marks are a little harder to come by. Ella with a nice nine. She's at 89 through nine. She's got an average of 73, so she is bowling way over her head in this match. So we go into our last box with a 17 pin lead for Ella and Dylan. Caitlin buries it. No split on four this time. It's got a nice spare lead. She can go get this one. Oh, Ella buries wow, the head pin. That. that one had hammer potential, and of course, if any of our kids can string three in a row, they will win the Academy Lanes $500 triple strike jackpot. Presented by Academy Lanes. Wow. Great try by Caitlin. No luck on that one. A little light on the wood. Now Ella looking for her third mark of the game. A lot of places she can put it. She picks a good spot. Ooh. I thought that ball was going to connect with the eight pin. No luck there by Ella. So I got a question for you. Hit me. Using the wood at this, like, with the younger age group, mm. slower ball, does it hurt almost? Sometimes. Yeah, I definitely think you're right. I always forget, like, when I project where to play the shot, I think of the ball at my speed, and I forget your ball's that it's going to like Your ball's going to bounce much more, right. and your ball's going to push the wood much more with this, it kind of just either ends up being a guide away or I have sometimes, a pop. They pop a lot of time. You yeah, know what I've about? sometimes played with the idea of intentionally throwing a way slower ball on some spare leaves, thinking that if you could master that and wood stuff, it could make some shots easier, some harder. Uh, but I think that's a bad idea because I wouldn't be accurate. 139 to 123 is the difference in this matchup. 16 pins in favor of defending champion Dylan Tufts. A dumb comeback would get a lot of this crowd pumped. Oh, yeah, it would. Mark Ritchie being number one amongst them. Great try by Dom, but it's Dylan who so close to wow, converting that. Look at it, still going. Nice out by both contestants, a pair of nines. Dylan, a Londonderry native. Where? Londonderry, New Hampshire, with the nickname of Dill. Dill Pickle. Dill Pickle. Favorite song is Ispy. I have no clue what the heck that is. I told you, we're not supposed to know their favorite Wait, songs. I think it's I Spy. That's, that's Still don't know. It does make a difference, but it makes more sense than Ispy. Dom with some off head pin, back pin, back door action. And in the words of Ranger Jim, that's a quacker. That's a quacker. Dom. Ooh, caught that front wood. He didn't want to hit that. Wanted to be a little right. It popped over. He wanted it. He thought he played it perfectly. Dom's confused. We are too. Tough break for Richie. So nice 10 by Dom. Tough 7 by Dylan. That knocks the deficit to 13. Still got to think it's going to take a mark for Dylan to jump back into this. For Dom to jump Dom, back into this, absolutely. rather. Um, Dom, who... What pro bowler does he remind you of? Let's play that game. It's, it's NFL draft season, it's comparison season. Who is he as a pro bowler? Uh, I see a little Godwin in him. A little Godwin? Hey, he's a, an animated young bowler, but also seasoned. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets good emotions, but also a lot of energy. Stole out. Carries a big mark. Dylan almost does too. Great try by Tufts. Dom could easily strung three in a row here. What about Boudreaux? You see any Boudreaux in him? And Dom, eh. They both have the same, no, they have so. similar arm swing. OK, I see what you're saying. What's your take on Dylan? Dylan, I mean, he bowls 
as I said, they're they, they're very good friends. So he bowls with one of the uh, the best in his age group, and he's right there with them. So who is that? Oh, comparison wise. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who does or not doing right here. Yeah, I got nothing. This is a good segment. <laughs> it's good I, mean, I tried. It's not my fault. That That's a good idea. Dylan picks up a spare. Nice little fist pump. Dom goes for the high five. We'll allow it. Dom with a tough out. And so it's going to take some fireworks for Dom to catch him here. Dylan, 78 in the ball in the ninth. And he's got a 14 pin lead he's sitting on. So a big ball here closes this one and puts him in a title matchup with Julia Jones and Angel Figueroa. And it looks like he has clinched it, folks. So a strong performance by Ella Tucker and defending champion Dylan Tufts. He's going to have a chance yeah, absolutely. to defend his Throwing champion. a good ball. Um, not a lot of uh, chance to go back to back. There. Chance to go back to back. First ever in the show history. He's got a smooth ball. He does. Dom with a nice eight. He finishes with a very strong oh, 90 game. Dylan with a 10 on the victory ball. He finishes at 92. 189 to 169 is the matchup. We're gonna talk to Ella and Dylan right now. We are here with the victors, Ella and Dylan. We'll start with Ella. Ella, first time, first time bowling on the show. You threw a, a 97. You happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, you were just saying something happened in the, towards the end of your match. What's going on? Um, so the last ball I threw, I hit myself in the ankle with the ball. You all right? Yeah. And you think it's going to uh, to affect the next round at all? No. No, just so. shake it off. Just got to shake it off, just like that. Going into the championship match, how are you going to win it all? Try to keep it straight. Did you think you did a good job keeping it straight this last time? Yes. I thought you did, too. Uh, 97, you're going to do better or worse? Probably better. Yeah, you're going to do better. Don't I'm looking forward to it. it. Great bowling by Ella. I'm here with Dylan. Dylan, you're one win away from title defense in a repeat. What is it going to take to get that victory? Um, work hard. Do what I was doing at the end of this string um, with um, my head pin sp spares and stuff like that. Yeah, you really found it in the second half. Did you change anything up? Yeah, I kind of took in what my brother was telling to me beforehand, and I kind of wasn't using that when I first started, so I started using that then. Cool. Great. That's the point of siblings. That's awesome. Uh, so you just defeated an Academy contestant. Now you're going up against Julia Jones. What's the relationship there? Um, Do you guys bowl together in the league? Um, no. Uh, we did bowl again uh, with each other with um, one of my other friends. I don't think he bowls anymore. I think it was 2014 or something. Gotcha. Well, we're going to have some Academy contestants in the finals. We've got Angel Figueroa coming too, the one seed. First Ooh. time meeting him on the show. Should be a good time. I'm excited. Championship match, always great. Always a good time. You better not miss it. It's 11 and under title time next week on Candlepin New Generation, coming to you from Academy Lanes. And on behalf of our Franklin TV friends, don't go anywhere. A week from now, 11 and under championship time. Candlepin New Generation encourages kids to be active and enjoy Candlepin Bowling. Candlepin New Generation is made possible by Academy Lanes, New England's largest Candlepin Center. Visit academylanes.com, by your community's public access channel, and by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.